Good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you for joining us. I am really pleased to uh, introduce you today to a query, and we're going to show you our innovative implementation of Ceph working in an OpenStack environment. My name is Paul Martin. I'm the general manager for EMEA. This is Nilesh. He'll be doing the demo. Good afternoon. We're really proud of what we've created here with a query. It's a software-defined, unified storage solution with Ceph at the core. It's multi-protocol, multi-workload, and multi-performance in an exabyte sc scalable uh, design working under one UI. And Nilesh is going to show you how easy it is to administer. Thanks, Paul. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, Nilesh Kanvarji here. So as Paul mentioned, you know, we're going to go through a quick demo today of a query, uh, our unified storage solution, uh, geared towards not just OpenStack, but storage in general. So I'm going to quickly today walk through what we're uh, providing on top of uh, general distribution Ceph. OK? So let me switch over to my demo here. So what we've done today is taken our upstream distribution of Ceph and added our magic sauce to it, uh, giving you ease of deployment, ease of management, ease of provisioning, and provisioning not just storage, but provisioning users and authentication. Okay. So here it is on the dashboard as you log into the environment, uh, you got the overall health of the cluster, how much is being utilized, a uh, little bit of matri metrics on uh, uh, latency, your bandwidth and IOPS, so forth. Now, traditionally, in a in a in the regular upstream uh, distribution of Ceph, there is no UI. Everything is done through command line, uh, and everything is supported by the user community. Uh, what we're trying to do here is make that life easier uh, from management. So overall general health, uh, and managing your devices. Uh, we've heard from a lot of administrators that figuring out what device, what OSD, where it's located, so forth, is so hard to find within a command line. We've kind of given you an easy button here to figure out where that OSD is failure is, and even give you the capability to light up that drive in the, in the rack. Okay. So due to time here, and I'm going to quickly run through some of the main features here. Uh, as it comes to creating pools, whether it's a replicated pool or a regular coded pool, again, point and click. Within a couple of clicks, you've created a pool to be provisioned. Yep. Creating a block device, once the pool is created, creating the block device, RBD, again, couple of clicks, and you fill in the uh, forms and hit submit. A okay. lot of our customers are looking for file access into the object store. So when you're doing file apps, you, know, you either have NFS or SIFs. If once you created the RBD image, you can provision those as an SIFs or an uh, NFS shares. Again. You create your, once the image is created, you give it a SIF share name, the host that it's mounted on, and then your Windows client can access it with the appropriate credentials. And speaking of credentials, how are you going to authenticate those? Are those local users, or do you have infrastructure uh, authentication, such as Active Directory or LDAP? Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> You know, if you have local users, we don't want uh, the administrators going into a Linux command line or anything to add those users. We give you the capabilities to add those local users here. Okay. And talking of, you know, we're at the OpenStack Summit. Uh, we have a lot of customers that are deploying our solution in an OpenStack environment, and we want to be part of that ecosystem. Uh, you know, so if you have S3 applications, and we give you capabilities to create S3 credentials here, the users, uh, and then the uh, 
uh, user, the keys are generated automatically, the access key and the secret key. Right? And we've noticed that you know, S3 is not really, you know, not all S3s are <laughs> equivalent, right? We've run into problems where a lot of S3 applications already require you to have a bucket available. So we've given you the capability to create the buckets just for those applications that require a bucket to be exist out there. Yep. And we, we have customers now that are deploying as a Swift inside the Ceph. So again, same concept of creating users right, and containers. And for authentication, we give you keyring configurations. All right, so and within OpenStack, if you have applications that are accessing this, uh, one of our other product uh, as part of a larger company, uh, we use direct RADOS call into the Ceph. Uh, so we give you keyring management to authenticate those applications that are accessing it directly through RADOS. Okay. Now, this is a big one. Okay. When you're deploying this in an in enterprise environment, uh, you want to be the capability to manage it, uh, monitor it through your network infrastructure. So we've given you ways to configure notifications. How are you going to be notified? What you're going to be notified on? And this list is getting built, growing every day, because we're getting recommendations from our users as to what they want to be notified on. Yep. Then subscription, All right. who's going to be notified, and so forth. And if you already have some form of uh, SMTP monitoring system, we give you capability on that. So I've run through this fairly quickly. So what I'm going to do now is, you know, we talked about SIF shares and so forth. So I've actually created one out here. So what I'm going to do is give you, you know, go and access that share. Here it is. Having said that, it, live demos, people. Uh, not working today. Okay, let's go see if we can access it as an S3. So this is one of the S3s that I created. I think it was my screen that I was messing with. Maybe a user error rather than a thing. So th this is the S3 that I created earlier. I can see that I can upload pro uh, images up there, my files, whatever, and I can access them. All right. And this is my share that I created earlier that I can access. All right. So fairly straightforward. And we've also given you capability, you know, we have requirements where you have administrators, then you have, we want people to have just read-only access, right? So we give you those capability also to create additional users that can access the interface. Yeah. So any, over to you, Paul, and we can right. ask any, take any questions here. Sure, I don't know, are any of you storage administrators? Sitting here, no. looking for an easier storage solution. No. no. If uh, no, well, we can definitely. Uh, we're at booth. Uh, well, uh, if you're finished with the demo. Yeah, the demo yeah. is done. Paul. Back to the slide. Back to. My so this is, um, you know, we're, first of all, we're really proud of what we've created here using Ceph, um, something that can be deployed easily in an OpenStack environment. But today, we've deployed a query in what is a core market for us, which is the media sector. Uh, we use it for um, high-performance video solutions. Um, and of course, one of the conversations we have is with service providers who are thinking about offering video services um, to their marketplace. Uh, it's a growing area all the time. Um, but also, we're involved in other 
diverse uh, projects which include anything from other video applications such as editing or media management into sync and share, backup and restore. Um, and, and many other types of um, solutions that are being required using the flexibility of the multi-protocol interface, offering the ability for our customers to have a truly unified and simplified storage architecture as they migrate from their existing storage solutions into new ones. So thank you guys for your attention. Um, as Nilesh said, so we're at booth C34 just over there. Um, come on by, you can actually put your name in to win an iPhone 7 um, and beer is being served today at our stand, maybe one of the few today. So thank you for your attention. If you've got any questions, please ask. Okay.